Welcome to Simpler. We are three pastors, husbands, and fathers on a journey to make life simpler by holding Jesus as the core for every belief and practice. This journey has shaped us to be more like Christ, freed us from the shame of failure, and encouraged us to a deeper love of our Lord and God. We invite you to join us in the discussions that have shaped and continue to shape our lives. <laughs> Did you guys know that uh, 58% of people who prefer soft serve ice cream to scooped ice cream like roller coasters compared with 71% of people in general who like roller coasters. Wow. So 58% of people who eat soft serve ice cream like roller coasters or if they prefer soft soft. Yeah, I think that's right. If they prefer that to scoop. 58% of people that prefer mm. <laughs> So <laughs> so look, if somebody that you know if you're like, "Hey, so do you prefer soft serve ice cream?" They say yes. There's a 58% chance they also enjoy roller coasters. Yeah. 42% they dislike it. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a coin toss, basically. You know, you <laughs> it's just, pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you just be like, oh, I bet you prefer roller. I bet you like roller coasters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you got a 50 50 chance. Yeah, although I think what it's saying, though, is like you have less of a chance of getting someone who likes a roller coaster if it's someone who likes soft serve because 72% of people in general like roller coasters. Right. So you have a better chance of just walking up to someone random and being like, hey, I bet you like a roller true. coaster. Mm. True, true. If someone's eating soft serve, you could be like, mm. yeah, it's a, it's a coin toss. Yeah, that's true. All right. They makes sell it, soft serve at theme parks. That, don't they just do the the uh, little little balls of ice cream. <laughs> what are those called? Dippin' Dots? Dippin' Dots. <laughs> Not a Frozen sponsor. balls. Don't they just have the little balls? Not a sponsor. <laughs> Not a sponsor. <laughs> Not a sponsor. <laughs> That's the generic, yeah, we, we can't, because it's, because it's not a sponsor, we can't say what it actually is. Just little balls. <laughs> little balls. You can't say Dippin' Dots. You can't say, yeah. you can't say little, little frozen balls. I wonder if that's the off brand. Just start little balls <laughs> with a Z. Yeah. <laughs> you having a hot day outside? Come enjoy little it's balls. L I L L I L balls. B A L Z. Little little balls. Cup of balls. Oh man! Hot day at the theme park. I'm getting the website right now. Okay, all right. Oh, oh, couple balls not couple balls. Do not Google that. Uh, and fifty eight percent of the people who were listening just got off. There's a correlation like, for you. Because yeah, no, so now it's oh, the three 70, categories. Seventy six percent of the people that eat couple balls don't listen to this podcast anymore. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's the so, Walmart uh, brand. <laughs> the off brand, so, the great uh, value. So grab your cup of balls and let's come on over to the PCC. <laughs> Here we go. Oh yeah, a little bit, a little bit slow, a little bit slow today. There he was go. over there laughing too hard, had tears in his eyes still. So we're here, we're here at the PCC. We're in Pierce's Culture wow. Corner, and I'm coughing up a storm <clears throat> today. It's a little bit lighthearted. My wife and I, we've been, we've been revisiting one of something that we've done enjoyed or i've enjoyed all throughout my childhood and it was watching vintage game shows we i don't know how i mean they're fun yeah, yeah they're yeah. fun they're fun so we've the watched price is wrong bob i know right <laughs> uh we've found that on Get amazon i know on amazon prime they have a bunch of vintage ones but what we're watching right now is family feud <coughs> With Richard Dawson, which I don't know if that's oh, like the original, wow. if that's like I don't the original, know if original either. Uh, <laughs> but it's old. like it's the old one, yeah. It's yeah. Like the the screen now is like flipping around. It's not actually digital at all, except for the one with the logo has like the lights and stuff. But yeah. that's about it. And uh, and man, it's fun. I mean, even though it's like 1980, I know there's ones that go back to the 70s, but they only have the 1980 season. That's I guess that's I don't know if that's like the legal or what the whatever one they pay to put on Amazon. But man, I'm enjoying the crap out of it. And I, we watched, I just think back to all the stuff I watched growing up as a kid. Price is Right, obviously. Like, yeah. you grew up watching Price is Right. Um, we watched Match Game growing up. I yep. love watching Match Game. Um, there was a few that we watched that weren't even vintage. We were watching the Game Show Network a lot. There was one called, like, Lingo. There was one that was kind of like this weird giant version of Boggle, which I can't remember what it was called. But it, they had, you guys remember, did you guys yeah. play Boggle? I liked Boggle. Boggle is like dice with letters on it, and you would shake it. And put it in the middle, and then you would write to try to make as many words as you could. And they had like this weird giant version of that, where I, I mean, as a kid, I felt like the thing was the size of this room, like, but it probably wasn't. It was probably just the size of this table. 
where they would have this enormous dice going all over the place. But what I love about game shows, That's exciting. it was right. Just cause it was just cause it was, it felt big. Cause it's, if it's cool at home, fine. You're rolling dice, but whenever the dice are the size of a table, like it's just way more fun. And when you're a kid, you're like running up to the screen. You're like, oh gosh, yes. And so then, but what's so fun about game <laughs> shows is that you're at home. I mean, even even a game show like like I said, me and my wife are participating in a game show that was filmed 40 years ago. Is that like we're on our couch yelling at our TV screen, <laughs> like getting into this? And that's I don't, funny. I love like there's an aspect about game shows that like there's like that's one of the best parts about it. I think that's what makes them so popular. Even though there is the aspect of like rooting for somebody who's like you like there is the aspect of i want a normal person to win money i do want a normal person to succeed there is um this isn't just this isn't like a necessarily a sporting event this isn't necessarily a celebrity this is this is a normal person who is up for some money there is that part of it but for i feel like for a lot of people there's also the part of it that's like you're participating like mm -hmm. the you're yelling out answers and or you're like oh you're so stupid or like <laughs> or like you're making fun of the person like you're you're actively involved in the game show and so i haven't i haven't watched these old game shows in a long time uh, but there's two things that kind of come from this culture commentary is one um it re it reawakened that love for game shows of just like how i think there's a lot of people that you can throw on wheel of fortune you can throw on a lot of those things i'm not saying 100 percent of people but you can more than likely throw on a game show that is culturally renowned or like culturally beloved and most people will be like oh hey wheel of fortune oh hey family feud and like participate in some form or fashion even if it's like we're enjoying a conversation over here and then being like I don't know. Uh, one of the questions was like, where do kids hide whenever they're running away from their parents? And then you could be having a conversation and be like, I don't know, closet, and then yep. go back to it. So you're participating kind of half-heartedly, even if you're doing that, you're kind of in it every now and then. And so that can be something you toss on the TV and it's still, it's not like we're ignoring each other watching TV. It's still part of the, I don't know, we're still part, it's still part of the conversation. It's still us enjoying one another. It's not just us ignoring one another with the TV on, we're enjoying Next each other. Next thing you know, you guys it's are going to have game those, uh... night. Those TV tray things that Together fold out. TV, dinners, like, yeah. man. TV dinner in front of the we're TV. All the it's like Matilda. Hungry with man like, mill. <laughs> all, yeah, I know. All the lights are off in the room and we're just sitting there and we're like, come on. Riley gets a little older. Poke the fork in the cellophane. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. When she gets a little older, you can have her run to the TV to change the channel That's right. for you. We, all right, we switch Adjust out all the of our, antenna. Yeah. <laughs> we switch out all of our TVs for all the old console yeah, televisions. But, yeah. Uh, that'd be kind of sick. Right? We just have a full on vintage house. Like psychopathic. We could sick. sell. Like you have I something know. wrong with your head. <laughs> I mean, you could do it where you run them digital. I mean, like you convert them. Yeah. You have a bunch of analog TV set up as like. It just looks just vintage. To look cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But secondly, the other part of it, so that culture commentary, I think there's a cool thing about game shows is that it's not necessarily just like a tuning out of, of reality or like just having a TV on, just have a TV on. But I think it can be like a game night type of mentality of like, we're playing this game together, even though it's still a pre-recorded television show. But also question for you guys listening and watching, I don't really know any of the new, are there, are there new game shows? I mean, and also we're, we live in a COVID world. So Doesn't Snoop have a new game show? Does he really? And let's see. There's another, uh, Dwayne Wade has a new game show. Dwayne Wade. Yeah, they have a lot of these. Uh, like in the summer, they do a ton of new game shows that are and, hosted by a whole bunch of yeah. different like celebrities. And a lot of them are a little more physically interactive too, I think. Mm -hmm. then. I gotta look at them. I need to watch that one. It's not a game show, but there's a one that uh, Steph Curry does that he hosts. Uh, Holy Moly. Holy Moly. Yeah, that one's it's, great. Looks pretty Love funny. it. Yeah. Is that which one's that one? Is that like it's miniature golf? Oh yeah, yeah. People, I, right? I did want to watch yeah. that one. Yeah, that looks amazing. Yeah, yeah I it's did awesome. Watch that one with oh. people. What, what kind of miniature golf have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> isn't, that, I just, isn't that the one where they're like running through the obstacle course? Yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. But you said with people, like miniature golf. All uh, well, what's the people running through the? There's people involved in running, right? What do you mean running? Like, isn't the holy moly thing? Maybe we're thinking two different shows. Maybe so. Because there's the one I'm thinking of, they're like running through these yeah. obstacles. Yeah, yeah. They have like a yeah. shape, like the wall. You're talking about the wall, hole in the wall. Yeah. Where they have to like jump and put their body through that shape in the wall. Or Isn't that like people doing the... Yeah, on Holy Moly, there's several, like every... I haven't watched the show. Every so. hole has like some sort of different obstacle. I mean, they're getting wet or dirty or muddy or whatever, but there's like one that's a wall of popcorn. But it's not them hitting a golf ball through... Oh, no, they do. But all the previews show them getting knocked off into the water or whatever. So they hit have to watch they the, hit show, the ball first, and then they have to... So, like, one of them, there's, like, 10 outhouses, 
uh, <laughs> like porta potties, you yeah. know, along the side. And you have to hit your ball on this really narrow kind of walkway and it bounces off a block towards the hole. And then when the light turns green, you have to sprint down that same little narrow walkway. But when the timer runs out, everybody inside the porta potty opens the door okay. and knocks you into the pit. So it's miniature golf with people. Yeah. So the people, the- <laughs> have you ever played miniature golf when you play where you ran through the obstacles? No, but I'm still a person. I know. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying, though, is like the golf is played with the people. That's what it looked like on the, like, instead of the golf ball going through the. Oh, no, no, no. It's the actual golf okay, ball. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the people are still doing it, right? Yeah. they so still, it's still miniature yeah. golf with the people being. Like, I see. I see. I see what you're saying. He looked at me like I was an idiot. I was like, <laughs> I was like, like there's no min- golf balls in the commercials. <laughs> yeah. I was like, don't, don't people normally play miniature golf? <laughs> Next time we go to miniature golf, you're going to be the ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, how else do you guys play this? <laughs> there's the one. Though they have like a, because they they film it all in the space of like two weeks in the dead of winter. Oh my gosh! And uh, in the water. Yeah, and so yeah, they film it like in January, and and so everybody's out there and you see all their breath and stuff like that, and then these people are getting knocked into the water and different stuff and they're coming out and they're still in their clothes and they're like oh, hitting fantastic. the balls and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's pretty intense. We I'll love try it. this. Um, uh, what's the dude's name? Rob Riggle. My boys love Rob oh, Riggle. Yeah, they yeah. just think he's so funny. And uh he's hilarious. Yeah. And so he they like anyway, they they like all of his he would make a lot of cup of ball jokes, you know, cuz there's this one where you're riding balls <laughs> Yeah, cup of balls. The <laughs> there's there's this one where you're riding Santa's sleigh and you have to grab onto this huge like it like it's a pulley and you it flings you pretty fast at this pole and you got to jump off and grab it. <laughs> and these guys hit it and spin oh. around it and fall into the water. And every time I just go, oh. <laughs> like, I'm just like, oh, and my boys think that is the best. They just think that's really funny. Anyway, it's a game show. Game I don't shows. know any other game shows. I don't yeah, really watch yeah. game shows anymore. Yeah, oh, that I was don't... a lot of talking about. Yeah, Holy sorry. moly, Pierce. Holy sorry. moly. <laughs> Holy moly, that's a lot of talking about it. I better just toss it on over to you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> just, just better not even mess with trying to think of a transition. All right. All right, Pierce. All right. So today we are going to talk about. Uh, I better not even try to respond to that. <laughs> right? <laughs> respond. Respond. Wow. There we go. There Look we at go. that. <laughs> today we are going to talk about uh, the just the way that we live our lives as Christians and the things that we do and the, the way that we seek to honor God and the way we, we seek to glorify God. And how all of that is birthed out of a response to who God is um, as as we seek to honor him with our lives. And so that is what we're going to spend some time talking about. But Ryan. Today. Pierce, Ryan, lay it on me. Didn't we just do a podcast on how we are righteous without works? Yeah. And, and man, you know, oh, sorry. Well, actually, wow. <laughs> well, but man. <laughs> New Third, segment. What is the but, the but man part? 31 episodes in and I'm I'm changing it up. But man. But man. That's right. <laughs> We're definitely clipping that part. It's right. gonna be its own segment. Adam West <laughs> as Buttman. We could probably put yeah. that on one of your buttons. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just put the light on the back wall. <laughs> Holy mackerel, Batman! Holy moly! Holy moly, 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 moly Batman! Batman. <laughs> uh, Buttman, I mean, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. What was I supposed to say? Oh yeah. Well, actually. Well, thank you. <laughs> your line wow. is well, actually. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Line. <laughs> What's the script say again? <laughs> well, actually, Pierce, uh, we did talk last week about how righteousness is a position we have in God because of who Christ is. And what we don't want to do today is confuse that. We're, we we don't we are not talking today about our righteousness, but we do believe that Christians are called to holy living and to to live out a life that proclaims Jesus and honors Jesus. Or we could better say we're talking about the result of righteousness. Yeah, yeah. We're not saying this isn't a conversation about righteousness again. This is what right. righteousness produces in us. Yeah, so because we are righteous, we are now equipped, and you, you used some language last time, Micah, saying set free. Mm-hmm. So now because we are righteous, we are equipped by the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked by the Holy Spirit, set free from the power of sin and death to live lives that bring God glory and honor. And, and, uh, and so what we want to be really clear on is that the lives we live, the, the actions we take, the works that we do, the deeds that we spend our days busy about, these things don't bring us righteousness. 
these things are birthed out of, and I'm just going to use 1 John 4, where uh, verse 19, where it says, we love because he first loved us. That mm. This idea that because God loved us, because he sent Christ to us, we cannot help but respond to that. Like when, when we become aware of how deeply loved we are by God, the outworking of that then is this beautiful response and a desire to, to make him known, a desire to exalt his name, a desire to give him praise and glory and, and, and have our lives uh, be conformed to the likeness of Christ. And so that's what we want to talk about today is that this is, Micah, you said it perfectly, that this is, this is a result of the righteousness we already have. And so, yeah, you want to run with that? Uh, question for you real quick, maybe just for some clarification for, for the conversation is, um, so like one passage you mentioned first on for we love because God first loved us. I mean, that's, that's something we could run with for a while. Like our ability to actually authentically love comes as a result of our response to God. Um, can you give us some other thoughts on that? Like, like I want to tie the last podcast in with this one because I think it's crucial that we understand that as people who've been um, set free from sin and death and set free from the law, declared righteous by faith in Jesus, that this is then what it produces in us. So like, are there some other texts that you think are like really strong in connecting those two things together? So I I definitely think we have to visit James chapter two, uh, where James says that faith without works is dead or faith without works is useless. So last week was faith. Last week was talking about uh, we have righteousness because of our faith in Jesus. And, and then the, the argument that James is making is that, you know, you say you have uh, faith, I say I have, or you say you have works, I say I have faith. I'll show you my faith by my works. And so th- this isn't James saying, um, I- I'm going to do works so that I have faith. He's saying that out of this faith I have in God, works are produced. This mm. is there's there, there's a response in my life. There's a drive in my heart. There's a uh, I think you mentioned it last week, Micah. Um, we could flip it on its head a little bit, but you said something along the lines last week of if you say you love your wife but you have multiple affairs, then you don't really love your wife. Or you're not showing that you. You're love not your showing wife. that you love her. But the flip of that would be that if you really love your wife it's not even something probably you're really intentionally trying to do. It's There's just this kind of natural outworking of you loving your wife and the way that you talk to her and treat her and mm. do sweet things for her and those kinds of things. And so- And maybe what, another way to say that now that we're talking about this in an applicable, like practical way of living is if if I work really hard to, to love my, as a follower of Jesus, if I work really, really hard to show that I love my wife and that work is still based on like me trying to earn love that I can, that she can only give me because of a relationship with Jesus. And I'm trying to work it based on my own merits. Um, then it will probably end up producing either her having an affair, or me having an affair. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I think I want to clarify well, a little say bit. Say that again, but because you, well, yeah. only reason I mentioned that is because I think there may be some confusion. We spent the whole podcast last time talking about how we can't earn righteousness by works. Right. Um, and so then James uses the word works. Right. And so that's, I guess, where I'm trying to connect the two together. Maybe you can give us some explanation on that because those works aren't the same. Right. Yeah. So the idea of uh, the works in Galatians, for example, are works with the intent of being righteous or works with the intent of... Which part of Galatians? Uh, so in Galatians, when he talks about, in Galatians 3... Uh, when he says, you foolish Galatians who has bewitched you, uh, having Christ publicly portrayed as crucified before you, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by works? And so he's rebuking them because the Galatian attitude was, great, we've put our faith in Jesus. Now we have to maintain righteousness by our works. And he's rebuking them for that. And he says, no, that's not it at all. Having begun by the Spirit, you you continue by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So when, when the conversation is about righteousness, it always has to be faith. Like works mm-hmm. cannot enter into the conversation. In James 2, the conversation is not about uh, righteousness. The conversation specifically here, I think we mentioned this one last podcast or the time before, uh, but the the specific conversation here, oh, two times ago when we talked about, uh, uh, what were we talking about? Overseers. Uh, you, you have people here who are ruling the church terribly. Like they're, they're cruel people. And they're saying, oh yeah, but we're, we're people of faith. And what James is arguing is, I can tell by the way you behave that you're actually not. 
uh, it's not a righteousness thing. Like, I mean, he's, he's just saying that, like, you, there isn't anything in your life that looks like Jesus. And, and so what James is talking about is that when we, when we have genuinely put our faith in Christ, there is also a genuine response that manifests itself in the way we do life, in the way we treat people, in the way we love others. Like, and because in this specific case, the rich are not loving the poor. And, mm. and he goes, man, like, you know, he, he later tells them in, uh, he later tells them in James chapter three, he says, you know, uh, with your mouth, you bless God and you curse men who are made in God's image. And he said, brothers, this can't happen. He goes, fresh water and salty water don't come out of the same well. Like he is shredding them, but it, he's not, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm answering the question or making it more yeah, clear. No, I think so. I think so. I think this is the general direction of, of the misunderstanding that is oftentimes had, I think because a lot of people preach it this way, but that like we mentioned it last time that you are saved by grace through faith. But now there's this expectation that your life has to do these certain kind of works right. to earn the pleasure of God. And I just want to make that distinction for people because I think for a lot of us, it's hard to make the distinction between the kind of works that James is speaking of and the kind of works that, that Paul's speaking of in Galatians. Okay, here's a good example. Um, I think, and, and temperate, <laughs> but I think this is a good example. So the way that I grew up, I, I was taught, you put your faith in Jesus for salvation. And then I was taught, maybe not in so many words, but then I was taught, and then you need to behave this way to be a good Christian. And so it it was a uh, it was yeah, a righteousness yeah. kind of so actually, dialogue. So the the shift is that we probably need to understand is that <clears throat> one's an identity. What we talked about right. last time was this is our identity now, who we are. Yeah. The other perspective is not an identity change, rather like a ticket that you get someday. Yeah. And there's this expectation that you have to like earn that ticket or prove that you've earned that ticket right. now. Prove I mean, maybe, that you're a good enough Christian and maybe or whatever. A, maybe a text to talk about it is, is John, is it 14? 14. John 14, yeah. where Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And I think a lot of people take that as, see, I love God because I obey all his commandments. Right. Really the, the implication of Jesus' statement is opposite. It's if there's an existing love relationship between me and you, the result of your life will be obedience to my right. commandments. And it's, that might sound like a nuance, but it's, it's pretty a pretty drastic difference between the two things that well yeah that, because it's a it's an if then statement we typically read that as look at my works that means I love God mm -hmm. instead of because I love God here are the, right. here's the result which is what I was trying to say earlier about like your relationship with yeah. if I told that to Cami like see look at all the things I've done for you I love you that doesn't imply love right if I really do love her it will manifest itself in the way that I interact with her the right. way I treat her and I will love her and I think. I think maybe the the thing that has kept us enslaved for so long is this mindset that that like in that in that relationship with God that means it's perfect. Right. That there's there's no sense of like you mentioned I think last week to people say but if you knew how much I screwed up this week. Right. Mm -hmm. And what that does for us when we have that mindset of works is when we have those those weeks or those days when we just blow it then it makes us feel like we're worthless. Right. Instead of going, crap, Jesus yeah. set me free from this and I no longer have to live in slavery to this junk. Yeah. I'm done with it. I'm ready to move on and live my life for the glory of God and no longer for the glory. Of, the difference is one person who's living by works slumps down in a corner and says, I'm the most awful person in the right. world. The other person goes, man, Jesus set me free from this. I'm done with it. And right. that's yeah. the difference. So the workspace puts you in a place of insecurity, grace mindset, the product of righteousness in this grace mindset is that you live your life in the midst of even your screw ups and go, yeah, I'm living for your glory. Well, and that's, yeah, that's what I was saying a second ago is like pastors. And I taught this way for years until about six and a half years ago, but I would, I would teach people, put your faith in Christ for salvation and then do this list of things. And what that resulted in for me um, because I still believed that my behavior is what changed God's view of me or impacted God's view of me. Yeah. Uh, and so if I missed a day in reading my Bible and God forbid that I missed like a week of reading my Bible, I thought God was mad at me. You would be so depressed. Oh, I would be. Yeah. And I just give you Dr. Pepper. Soda. Be like... Depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Pepper, not a sponsor. Uh, yeah, but I, I would hate myself because I would think, man, God, God is not happy with me right now because I've missed a week. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that some of you have felt that way. That is not the correct perspective of, of 
behavior or actions or life or living. Like nothing that we can do shapes our righteousness. It is our faith that, that secures our righteousness. But, but when people ask me, so like I used to tell people all the time, you need to be reading your Bible. I used to ask people all the time, are you reading your Bible every day? And I've quit doing that uh, because I, I did that for, to people from a perspective of performance. Mm-hmm. Like you need to do these things. Now, when people come to me and go, man, I really love God. I want to know more about him. What I do is I say, hey, reading the Bible is a really great way. You can know and enjoy more about God. Mm -hmm. But it comes from a place of, man, I really love God. I want to know more about him instead of, I need to read the Bible so God will like me today or so they hear my prayers. (laughs) And those are vastly different things. So so then we could say really the distinction between those works in James and the works Paul mentions in Galatians according to the law is the heart, right? Say it again. The distinction between those two kinds of works is the heart. Yes, absolutely. So this is this is a shift. So that I feel like is a difficult thing to understand. Yes. When the Bible, when especially when the New Testament mentions works, um, it's it's too easy to hear Paul talk about works in Galatians as this negative thing, and then James talk about works as this positive thing, and go, "What the crap? Like, yeah, why are, why are they mentioned in two different lights? Yeah. So I think it's important to understand the difference between the two is they might even look the same, Mm -hmm. but they're done from different hearts. One's a heart to earn your own righteousness and one's a heart that's been set free that has just a heart and passion and zeal for God. And that's the reason that you do what you do. Yeah. I think, I think from a practical standpoint, we could probably all imagine some, I mean, hopefully not everybody has a negative situation, but Probably most of us can imagine a situation where someone in our life loved us from a conditional perspective, uh, where we constantly felt like we had to earn their pleasure. And that's a scary kind of spot to be in, and it's an exhausting spot to be in. Uh, You feel manipulated. You don't really feel loved. You don't really feel cared for. And then we've probably all had somebody in our life that we just kind of couldn't believe that they loved us as well as they loved us, and we felt safe with them, and we felt more ourselves and more relaxed and whatever. And, uh, and I think that that's kind of the difference between what we're talking about here, right? Like that, that when we come to the place where we recognize that the God of heaven uh, loves us and delights in us and enjoys us because, not because of what we've done, but because of who Christ is and what he's done for us. When we come to that place where we see who God is, how, how does it not encourage us and delight us and stir us up, you know, and cause us to be more excited about what God is doing? I know growing up, it was like a no-no to not go to church. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, period. And uh, there was always something that felt weird to me about that. Not that I didn't want to be at church, but like, well, there were times I didn't want to be at church, to be honest. Like, anyways, but... um, You were a preacher's kid. (laughs) That's probably why I didn't want to be at church. Um, But, like, here's a question for you, for those of you listening. Have you ever felt guilty for not being at church? Oh, yeah. And the question you should ask is, why do you feel guilty about it? Um, Because really, I think a heart that is bent on God says man, I'd love to be with my brothers and sisters in Christ today to mm-hmm. sing together, to worship together, to get in the word together, to, to pray together, to meet each other's needs. Like if, if, if your motivation to be at church is I don't want to feel guilty, then you've misunderstood mm. the freedom that you right. have in Christ. And that's the difference is like it can, both situations you're going to be at church. Right. One's out of guilt and one's out of a desire and zeal for God. Right. It looks the same on the outside, but the difference is the heart, which actually you see reflected all across the Old Testament. Right. God says in Joel, give me your hearts and not just your garments. Second Chronicles 16, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the earth, seeking to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to right. him. It's heart over and over. Isaiah 1 kind of alludes to the heart of the people and yeah. not being for God. Yeah, Ezekiel for sure. 16. I mean, heart's been a big thing forever. David's called a man after God's own heart, even yep. though he's screwed up all the time, seemingly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that's the difference is it sometimes the works might look the same on the outside, but they're mm. different motivations. One's done out of a heart of um, selfishness or pride. And one's, I think, done out of a zeal and passion for God. And yeah. I think that affects us differently. Galatians 5 comes to mind too. In that regards, I think that a lot of times in this conversation, it's easy to not remember that it's the spirit that we have mm-hmm. now. In us, he says, I walk by the spirit in Galatians 5, 16, and you will not gratify the desires of the, of the flesh. Um, which we, have we done an episode on that? On we, we've Galatians talked 5? about it. Yeah. Okay. So just as a quick note, um, we three are strongly in this camp. We do not believe that, believe is the wrong word. We're pretty sure, pretty stinking sure that um, 
the word flesh in Galatians, well, all through Galatians is not speaking of what we call sinful nature, but that he's speaking of actual. Oh, I would say I'm really, really flesh, sure. About really, that. I'm just like leaving a little bit of room for conversation with that. So, no, that's sweet of you. Um, <laughs> so sweet of you. <laughs> That's it's not. Nice it's not very often it's that nice. you're. You you leave other people uh, room, but it's. I, it's I, I'm. This is one rare case where I would be willing to leave less I, room than you for sure. I'm like a hundred percent sure, but I want to. I'm, I'm kind of like. I'm kind of curious of the kickback on this, but but yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. he's talking about sinful nature. So he says, "Walk by the Spirit, and you won't gratify the desires of the flesh." In other words, the desire to earn righteousness by your own works is what he's right. comparing. Uh, flesh being works of the law on your own, trying to earn the righteousness of God. So you want to avoid sin, he says, then do life in the spirit. Yeah. Walk by the spirit. And sometimes we forget that. Like we spend so much of our life trying to do it on our own that we forget. It was funny because the word there, walk, means like to literally like take the hand of the spirit and let him guide you. Mm -hmm. There's no sense of like climb the stairs and get to where the spirit is. It's like he's right there saying, yeah. come on, let's go. And you just grab his hand and he takes you. Yeah. And when you take the hand of the spirit and walk with him through life, it says you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. And right. then it gives lists of what those look like. And so I think that it's easy to like get in this mode where we're like, I got to do this. I got to do this on my own. And we forget, man, you kind of got to just sit back and go, God, I want my life to glorify you. Yeah. Help walk me through this. Walk me through it. Well, there's, there's no chance. There's zero chance that the, that Jesus doesn't glorify the father. Mm -hmm. And there's zero chance that the Holy Spirit doesn't glorify the Father. And so that's what Galatians is saying, right? If you walk by the Spirit, you won't carry out the desires of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Because it has nothing to do with who we are. It has everything to do with who the Spirit is. The Spirit's sole purpose is to glorify the Father. And, and so when we die to ourselves and we let the Spirit, it's Galatians 2.20. Like a lot of Galatians fits into this conversation. <laughs> I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. Yeah. And the life that I now live in this body, the, the works that I now do, the behavior that I now engage in, the, the things that I'm spending my time doing, I now do by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Like he's, Paul has, is essentially saying, I've come to the end of Paul. Yeah. And and I'm yeah. done with Paul and I'm and now Christ reigns in me. Now the spirit reigns in me. Right. And and the outworking of that uh is the outworking of that then is a response to who God is and um I mean it, I I don't know, Micah, I, I've known you for nearly 19 years and uh you were engaged to Cami at the time when you and I did our first D now together and became friends. And, um, she was say you and I were playing a lot of disc golf back then when the, there was one course here in town and they didn't even have baskets. They just had posts. <laughs> Some good and, days. uh, and we'd have to be really quiet to listen to see if the disc <laughs> hit the post. Uh, but, uh, but she was saved as beautiful in your phone. Mm -hmm. Uh, is she still still is? Yeah. I figured so. That's why I asked. Uh, that would have been, would have ruined my whole point if you're like, <laughs> no, <laughs> nope. Uh, but uh, but whenever she'd call, you'd go, "Hey, beautiful." That's how you typically would answer and stuff like that. And just the the way you've always talked about her, the way you've always talked to her, I think. I mean, we've been friends, like I said, 19 years, and I've never questioned how you felt about her ever because of how you talk about her, how you conduct yourself with her, um, how, just the things you say about her, how she, like from how she saved in your phone. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, even, even the different ringtones you've had for, <laughs> for her when she's called you at different times, you know, <laughs> business time. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and, and I think that that's, that's not something you're forcing. That's not something you're doing to try to win points with somebody. That's not something you're doing to try to win, you know, like husband of the year. Like, it is really just birthed out of this delight you have in her. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as we delight in God, as we, I, I think, you know, when people come to me and they say stuff like, man, I'm really struggling with serving God in this thing. I, I used to, I used to give them law as an answer. Well, try to do this at least two times a day, try to do this or try to do that. And now what I do when people come to me and go, man, I'm really struggling in this area of, of my life and giving this over to God. I say, ask that God would show you how much he loves you. Mm. Um, and, and in their mind, they're kind of looking at me and they're like, how does, how does that fix my <laughs> pornography issue? And I'm like, it, it really does begin with understanding how deeply you're loved by God mm -hmm. because everything comes out of that, you know? It's a response. Yeah. It, and there's no, there's no, like, 
I know this sounds overly simple, but there's no necessity now for us to earn God's pleasure on our own. Absolutely. And I think the moment that we go, oh my gosh, and recognize yeah. that, it shapes completely differently in how we live our life. Well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, and I, I may have used this example before, but uh, uh, it's been a while. So uh, when I was a kid, we had this huge, I think mulberry tree. I don't, don't hold me to that. Uh, in our backyard, it was massive. It covered like half of our backyard and we had a big backyard. And it would drop so many leaves in the winter. And so every Saturday, Haley and I would have to go out there and rake the leaves. And we would rake every Saturday, like two bags of leaves, but two bags of leaves would take us like three hours because we had crappy Gosh. attitudes and we hated it and we didn't want to be out there. And you know what I mean? So it would take us forever to do. Well, um, when I was about 28, I had no money. I had, I had just moved to Angelo about a year before. I might've just been 27. I just recently moved to Angelo, had no money to my name, broke. My mom calls me and at this point my parents had divorced and she said, hey, I haven't raked leaves this entire season. It was early December, like the first week of December. She goes, you want to earn some Christmas money? <laughs> and I said, yes. And, and, uh, and she goes, if you'll drive to Midland, which is a two hour drive, she goes, if you'll drive to Midland and rake up all the leaves and mow and weed eat for me, she goes, I'll pay you, I think it was like 500 bucks. Wow. I know. And so I drove. And when I was driving in, it was, the sky was getting grayer and grayer. And it was just like, oh, crud. And the temperature dropped like 20 degrees. You know how mm. it does sometimes. And I got out there and I raked, I raked 32 bags of leaves and mowed her yard in three hours. The <laughs> same amount of time that it had taken Haley and I to bag two bags of leaves. And the difference was law and grace. Mm. <laughs> like that was completely the difference. Like I hated it when it was something I had to do. The moment it became part of the blessing, yeah. I was like, man, I'm in, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that once we come to the place where we're like, man, God is a God of blessing and richness and love, like it becomes really easy to do these things that under the law are really impossible to do. Yeah. And there's, there's less standards. Yeah. You yeah. know, I think that's what kills us is we set these own standards for our lives. Like you used to, you used to do this still where you're trying to read the Bible at least six times a year. Yeah. And you would be so depressed when you missed the day, like yeah. so depressed. And I was always <laughs> thinking like, like you're the whole reason you're doing that is because you wanted to read the Bible at least as many times as George Mueller. Yeah. And which is funny because you always talk about how you're not competitive. You're not competitive in anything except for Bible reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, but board but, games, but it was, oh yeah, yeah board games. <laughs> um, but it was your standard. Yeah. It was there totally was, my standard. There's no, there, there not was no, biblical model. no. And you were like, it was affecting your life because you brought a standard in that yeah. wasn't. It was I not put a standard, standard on myself that God does not require of me. Right, yeah. and so instead of instead of saying, you know what, it would be awesome to get through the Bible six times a year and letting that drive you, you're yeah. like, okay, I got to get through yeah. the Bible six yeah, times yeah. a year. And it was it's depressing when hearts. I didn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and for all of those of you who are listening who go, well, you know, the the scripture says that you know, how can a young man keep his way pure by living according to your word? I've hidden your word in my heart so that I won't sin against you couple of thoughts on that. One, that's Psalm 119. It's the longest chapter in the Bible, 176 verses long. And David is talking about the law, the commandments, the ordinances, and the statutes of God. Uh, he's not talking about faith. He's not talking about Jesus. He's not talking about the Savior. He, when he says the word of God there, he's not even talking about what we call the Bible. He's really just talking about Genesis through Deuteronomy primarily. And, and so like, that's a law mindset. Like it yeah. really is. Yeah. And so like, the, the first century church, and I would, I would argue a great percentage of the church, maybe half or more of the church today, doesn't even have the Bible in their language or right. didn't, doesn't have the ability to read it. Like God's mandate, Micah's point is that God isn't telling you read your Bible once a year, you know, all the way through once a year or six times a year. Like God wants us to know him yeah. and is inviting us into a relationship. Yeah, with and him. I think what, I mean, I grew, up, I grew up hearing all the time people say, make sure you have your daily quiet time, which... Yeah innately isn't like a, you know, terrible perspective at all. Yeah. But I think what happened is that, that became a rule. And so people would go, oh crap, I was supposed to set aside 30 minutes for God today and I didn't. Yep. Um, so a, a couple thoughts on that. One, do you really just want to spend 30 minutes a day with God? Right. right. Like I always tell when I'm preaching at camp and ask kids like, like, you know, how do you think that would go in my marriage if I spent 30 minutes a day with my wife? I always say, we well, definitely wouldn't have four kids. You know? <laughs> like that's, you know, no, no that's relationship. That's why I give is... Michelle 35 minutes a day. Because <laughs> <laughs> two minutes in heaven is better than one minute. In heaven. <laughs> but, but no, like, do you really just want to spend 30 minutes a day with God? Secondly, like this, this mindset that this is some kind of regulation I have to follow. Like 
this pattern. I was always told, read the Bible. We've talked about this before. Yeah. I didn't realize until after college that I'm an auditory learner. Like all the classes I had in college that were lecture classes, I aced. All the classes that were like read the chapter and test, I'd get like C's, like struggle to get C's because that's not how I learned. So now um, I, I study the Bible quite a bit, but I rarely read the Bible. Yeah. Um, I listen to the Bible Even. a lot. <laughs> I listen to the Bible. Sometimes when I'm doing woodworking, I'll, I'll look up, especially if it's Old Testament narratives and realize I've been listening to the Bible for like the last two hours. Doesn't yeah. mean I caught everything in the stories. No, but I listened to the dramatized version. So I remember, you know, like mm -hmm. voices yeah. um, in the story. But sometimes I'll usually listen to the, to the Bible while I'm playing disc golf, ride my mountain bike, things like this, because I just want the word of God to just kind of flow over me. Sure. There's this sense where I just want to be immersed in who God is as much as I can. And that's a different perspective than, oh crap, I missed my 30 minute quiet mm -hmm. time today. And that's the difference, isn't it? It really does shape your life. When you move away from a perspective that now in Christ, my life is based on a list of standards and regulations so that I can be pleasing to God to a place where you go, I'm already pleasing to God. So I get to yeah. live my life. Get I just to. get to be immersed mm -hmm. in who God is and live my life for his glory. It changes everything. You got to jump in here, Pierce. Yeah. We've been, we've been monopolizing the whole time. It's because it, Monopoly is a board game and I'm incredibly competitive. That's right. You've been monopolizing it. <laughs> monopolizing it? I think, yeah. So, I mean, I'm going to, I'll summarize, man. I think get to. <laughs> <laughs> I finally get to summarize. I'm here to summarize. I think freedom, freedom and get to and that mentality all kind of encapsulates and, 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 and wraps up so much of this mentality and it's it's a it's just a shame that um christian life has been so tainted by our culture um to be wrapped down and and boiled down into rules and laws and i shouldn't even say our culture because it is something that that's yeah, been, it's been, been that way for a long time it's, yeah it's, it's the been, entire it's been that way christianity um, yeah. i mean it's been that way even since the old testament like we said earlier i mean they where, where god has been has been um pleading for their hearts mm -hmm. saying, hey give me your hearts like stop stop chasing after all these other things just just give me your hearts like mm -hmm. come after me um i mean even 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 with uh, david's cry of repentance like you don't i mean I, I could do all of these things but what you desire is a contrite heart yeah um and then i will do all these things and so like um good text we should have mentioned that one. yeah it's it's i mean you're welcome that's one <laughs> it's one that for. that might be one of the best <laughs> old testament passages on law and grace i think in, yeah. in response and seeing that yeah so seeing seeing this place of of yeah heart for that and the freedom of who we are now in response to the love of god and, and with who we are now especially with what christ has accomplished yeah um and how we see the grace of the cross and the victory of the empty grave and what has been accomplished and now who we are in christ um, and how that cannot change what we talked about last week, that our righteousness cannot be affected. It cannot be changed by any of our actions, by anything that we can do. Why? Because God's power, grace and love is way greater, way more powerful than anything we could ever do, yeah. which is what was, <clears throat> what was sealed and put into effect by our salvation to begin with. And so if we ever, if we ever question that or doubt that we look back at the fact of like, well, we couldn't save ourselves to begin with. And now we look at this freedom that we have and this empowerment that we have and we can say, wow, look at what he's cleaned us off to do. Look mm -hmm. at what he's done to do. Also, I, what I thought about earlier as well was Ephesians chapter two, where he says kind of back to back. Um, what does he say? Uh, For by grace you have been saved and this is uh, through faith. This is not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works so that, you, so that no one may boast. But then he immediately says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which we should which God prepared, prepared before him that we should walk in him, walk in them. So if you look at those back to back, you've been saved, not by works so that you can go do some works. Yeah. <laughs> so like it's, if you look at the back to back, it doesn't seem to make sense. But with this mentality of, Hey, you've been saved, not by your own doing, not by anything that you can do, but that God has saved you. And now he has empowered you by something that he has prepared beforehand um, to walk in his ways, to walk in what he has, uh, has prepared for you to do yeah. and in his goodness and in his good works. And last, last week you had mentioned uh, Micah that um, people would, people would ask, so are you telling me that you, we can just tell people they can go do whatever they want to do? Um, and I had mentioned a story, I think I'd mentioned it on the podcast before, probably a long time ago, that there was, there was a preacher that had said, love God and do whatever you want. 
Um, oh yeah, we did talk and, about that. And there was there was a lot of people say, "Well, I can't I can't just tell people to do whatever they want." Well, you're forgetting the first part: love God, love God. and do whatever you want. Because your desire changes. Because your desire changes. Mm-hmm. Your heart changes. If the first if the first part is a true heart for God. A, a true heart that has been changed by the gospel, that has been shaped by this righteousness that is a gift from God, that is a gift that is empowered by his spirit, um, then we've been completely changed, been completely shifted, and our heartbeat and our desire is to know him, is to chase after him, is to pursue him, and is to walk in his ways. And we don't desire the futile ways of this world because they are, they're nothing. They're death. They mm-hmm. are they, they, they're, they're fleeting we we chase after what is lasting, what is eternal, what is what is of God, what is of love, and what is of grace. Not as what what is of hate and is of uh, hostility and of brokenness, but rather we are a light into that darkness to free others from that, so that we can bring this message of grace and goodness in the midst of that. Why? Because that is the good work that God has given us to do. That we can be. Um, his people here on this earth now to be an encouragement to our brothers and sisters and to be a light to the lost and. Um, to be his people here. So, yeah, so we, and it is not something that we have to therefore <laughs> prove to him. He's like, Hey, I got you this cool, shiny suit. Now you can now, now go, now go prove yourself that you can be my employee. I don't know. What, <laughs> I don't know what kind of metaphor I'm going for here, but rather, Hey, you're my child. I love you. And now we get to live as his children. <laughs> and how exciting is that? And it's something you had brought up as well is that like this, this is truly a response. Like our, our living, our living that out is a response. Like how, how exciting is that? Like we, we see, we see these videos on Facebook, these viral videos of, of people who's like, whose parents um, come home from like, from the Middle East, whose military parents come home from the Middle East. We see these videos in courtrooms where like adoptions are finalized. We see these, we see these different types of videos that just like, that pull at our heartstrings because these they are actual responses of or they are children responding in in moments of of desperation and love and grace where they are they are seeing a parent they didn't think they would see or they're brought into a family when they thought they would never have a family and we know what responses look like even and even like that that's 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 the depth of human emotion and then we even like if we say like the more quote unquote surface level of human emotion think about like the soccer world cup and we see like the responses there when when you're when you're when your country uh, or the team you're rooting for sc- uh, scores like we know what response looks like we know what emotion is that is i think the best way to put it is that we look the best way to say it is that we if we look at and understand the depth and the reality of what has happened at the cross let your life respond and that response will be genuine and real why because we can look at a courtroom and look at the adoption that has happened there. And that is very real and raw. And it, the, the tears are worthy of it. The heartstrings being pulled is worthy of it, of course. But how much greater is it that we have been pulled out of sin and condemnation that we've been adopted into a family that's internal? Like how much greater is that? So respond well with your life. Like how awesome is that? That's amazing. How was, how was that summary? That was good. Okay, good. Yeah. It's been a while since I've done a summary, so, I mean. I, I give it four stars. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Out of what? Out of 30, <laughs> out of, out of 30 stars? Out of 100. Yeah. Out of 100? Would listen again. Would listen again, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think to tack on to that, Pierce, you're, what you're talking about with the emotion of it is, um, I think too often our salvation is just this intellectual thing that happens. Exactly. And yeah. The, you said in the beginning, Ryan, but maybe this is, Pierce, what you're doing is tying in the emotion of it. We love because God loved us first. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, I know that like DC Talk said, love is a verb, love is a love is a love is a verb. But there's True. a sense <laughs> where like this is an emotion we experience mm. that causes action. And so it's, I think it's too often we have this sense of like, well, I just got to do the action, but we forget yeah. that it's driven by a recognition mm-hmm. of what God has, has done for us. It's funny, the word redeemed, it's this concept of being like, uh, the word redeem was often used when, when a slave got bought from the auction mm. and then freed. Like you were, or redeemed was even like when, when someone was bought back mm-hmm. from, from, yeah. from slavery. From slavery. And yeah. so there's a sense where you like are, are home, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's the, uh, well, anyways, too many stories, but like it's the emotion of it. And that, that allows us, I think then to go, 
man, in the midst of whatever circumstances are going on in my life, I'm, I'm set as a child of God. Yeah. And that emotion, that recognition goes boom and drives the rest of your life. That's yeah. it. And I think you see it actually in other countries where they don't have the luxuries we have. Like China, I've heard stories of uh, women beating pots and pans when they're meeting in these secret places <laughs> so that no one outside can hear them singing. Yeah. Yeah. Who does that? We don't even go to church if the AC's out here. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, that's how they do it in West Texas. Those of you <laughs> in the mountains don't have AC, so you're like. Sure. You don't have to worry yeah. about it. Yeah. So it's, I think it's, you're right, Pierce. It's this emotion that drives us forward. Yeah. You know what's funny? And then we can, we can move forward if you don't have anything to add. There was, I remember there was, there was an, I don't know how old I was, but I had an emotional response. One of the first emotional responses, I think, to freedom from slavery um, in, in response to uh, salvation, like true salvation in Christ, uh, was at the end of the cartoon version of Aladdin uh, for <laughs> me, which is so, so strange and so weird. But the point where he like wishes genies freedom <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the things fall off of his wrists and he goes, and he goes, tell me to do something. And uh, Aladdin goes, uh, I wish for you to do this. And he goes, no. And then he's like, ah, <laughs> I like legit. I don't know what it was that time I watched it, but I like had a, I had like a, one of the single tear moments. And I was like, <laughs> freedom, <laughs> like, true freedom. freedom. We can, we can look sin in the face and be like, no, like I'm free. I'm free from you. Like I'm done. I'm done. Last I'm week. This was last week. Yeah, this, was, <laughs> this was last night, man. Dude, you know what? <laughs> we can put on the Hawaiian shirt and the goofy hat <laughs> and just be done with sin, man. <laughs> I can show you the world. I can show you the world, man. <laughs> shining, we don't want to get shimmering me. wonder. Splendid. Splendid. There yeah, yeah. yeah, there shining, it is. Yeah. Shimmering splendid. Boot toot and boogie, man. <laughs> Tell me, princess. That's right. Uh, well, if you guys don't have anything to add to that. <laughs> Country version of I can show you the That's world. That's right. Uh, do you have a simpler hack for us, Mike? I do. I do. I got a, a school, another school simpler hack for you. Awesome. I last, last time kind of school related. So another school related thing. I think I've known this for a while. I was just reminded about this. Um, for those of you who are in school or are in a situation where you are in like tests, kind of like school, um, apparently something that will help your concentration is mints. Mm. So if you keep mints in like your bag or your backpack, they actually apparently help reduce headaches. I didn't know that, but they have been shown to help improve concentration if you're eating or have a mint while you're taking a test or nice. something like that. So keep mints around. Uh, to do better in school. That's awesome. Just take that mint, apply it straight to your forehead. No That's more right. headache. No I would have, I think instead of mints, I would have rather had stick. mint chocolate chip little balls to help me get through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Little balls. Little balls. <laughs> little balls and a cup of balls. Speaking of. That's probably why I like. Cup of balls. <laughs> yeah, a cup of balls. We had Altoids all through high school, but then oh, yeah, they yeah. like, Altoids I feel like just disappeared. Just out of nowhere. I loved Altoids though. Um, are they still around? Don't, don't you want to like, I always wanted to keep their tins. Like we did. Feel like you, That's you probably why they went away. It was yeah. probably some kind of like EPA thing. Like you can't have the tin The anymore. best, uh, the, the, their tins were the best guitar pick holders. Yep. Mm -hmm. They were the best, like little things for yep. musicians. Like we would just keep all the little accessories yep. and things in there. That's great. It was awesome. Yeah. Speaking of being awesome, Steven's over oh, there. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is, this is a, man, you've been like nice. super Speaking nice to him. Speaking of tins. Yeah. Speaking of little things, <laughs> a couple of balls. Steven's over there. Uh, <laughs> Sad reality. Uh, we are at the Garden Audio. As always, jamming in this sweet room. Uh, you're going to want to check him out at the Garden Audio on Instagram. Uh, go see what he's going on. What's going on over there? We see what's going on with he's going on. You know, we can, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> he's another the thing over there. Uh, we are at Simpler Pod on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us shoot us a message. Uh, you got a topic or something that you want to hear addressed? Or if a hack? You, or a hack? Uh, yeah, post the hack. Um, if you're if you're like doing, a simpler hack, not like yeah, yeah. not like hacking like. Oh, like no. that foreign crypto exchange that got hacked. And oh no, yeah, don't do that. Money and not like that. <laughs> don't do that. No, 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 don't do that. Post a simpler hack. <laughs> or if you if you have a hack that you want Micah to try, let us know. Or if you do one of Micah's hacks, then let us know. Tag us at Simpler Pod. Hashtag Simpler Hack. Do any of that fun stuff. If you have a topic that you want us to address, or you have some thoughts on something that we have talked about, shoot us a message. Shoot us a comment. Let us know. We want to talk about it. We want to address it. 
you have any questions, we do want to hear those things. We want to build this community and you guys are the means by which we can do that because of you listening and watching the, that's how we grow. We live in a digital day and age where things can be shared, share the YouTube link, share the Apple podcast link, share the Spotify link, do all of that stuff on your social media, post it to your story, do those things. Why not? Because we want to grow and get rich and famous. That's not how these podcasts work. Trust me. That's not how the music industry or the podcast industry works. We would have to get to like thousands. We could get paid for this. We could probably get paid like very little amount, but not like we wouldn't get stupid rich and famous, but what we can do is we can build a community and we can build an awesome community where we can grow and learn together. So let's do it, man. Let's do it together, man. And women. I'm not, I'm not going to be gender exclusive. That's not what I'm here for. What did you say earlier for the well, actually, but man. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, guys, thank you. And gals. (laughs) Wow. But man, you slipped up right away. (laughs) Thank you guys so much. And gals for listening. (laughs) You're the best and watching. And as always keep Christ as core. What could be simpler than that? We'll catch you next week. Bye.